There we go. So welcome everyone. My name is Nathaniel and I am one of the customer success managers here at Connecting. We're going to be talking about all the new things that have come out over the past few weeks. We also have our panelists here. We have Almog, we have Marina, we have Shahaf, and we have Ruven who are all with us. Feel free to ask any questions that you wish at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You do have a Q&A tab. We do recommend that you use that tab to ask all of your questions and then we'll be able to respond to you one-on-one -on -one. so just to give you a tiny bit of what's in store we're going to start talking about all of the capabilities that we have released on our uh, on our schedule then we're going to move over to the courses capability we're also going to be talking about our time clock then we're going to move over a bit to the quick task functionality. We're gonna look at our user page and that's it, I think. Let's see here, hopefully that will load. Okay, we'll continue without the phone. Perfect, so let's move over to the scheduling. We have quite a few capabilities that we have released. So if I enter the schedule, we have a very exciting capability. The first one is the ability to add an availability to your users directly from the dashboard. So if you click on actions here at the top right, then add an availability, we can select here, for instance, Caitlin. And I can, of course, add the unavailability. Another thing that we added is actually the ability to repeat that unavailability. So let's say Caitlin is unavailable every Monday, then we can uh, add that and have that end, let's say, after five repeats. And there we go. And if we move between the schedule, you will now see that on the Mondays, she is now unavailable. Another thing that we added is a few more export options. So if I click on actions and export, Basically, you can now customize your uh, scheduling export. So you can decide what's important for you and make sure that that information is being exported to your Excel sheet. Another minor feature, but that I do think makes a big difference is if we use a repeat shift, before it was a bit hard to understand which of my shifts are repeated and which ones aren't. Now I can just hover over and I have this little icon and I can actually see that this is the first day of the repeat, the second, the third, and so on and so forth. So hopefully that will make it a bit easier to work with our schedule. In regards to the notes, before when you hovered over a note, you would only see that it would say this is a note and you wouldn't know who actually wrote it unless you went into the specific note. Now you can actually see who is the individual that wrote the note, which I think is a very neat capability. A very, very large feature that has been requested from companies that use our OpenShift is the ability to uh, decide who is able to claim a shift. So if I click on this shift, I have a shift here with five open spots and I can see that there are a few requests. So now I can basically see which of my users wanted this specific uh, shift and I can decide who will get uh, those spots. So this really puts the manager in control where before people could just claim shift and it was first come first serve. Now the manager can decide who is the person who is gonna get the shift. Another thing I want to show is if we go to our settings and we go to limitations, adding to that, uh, for those that aren't familiar, you can also add specific limitations to the schedule. For instance, I can decide that user can't unclaim shift less than two days before it starts. Again, putting you in control. We can decide how many working hours um, people can do for a specific week, max number of shifts, etc. cetera. What is, uh, what is neat and a capability that we added is the fact that you can now prevent users from claiming a shift 
if they will exceed those 40 hours. So again, that puts the manager in control and you can make sure that users adhere to the limits that you set for them. And that is it in terms of the scheduling. I'm now gonna jump over to our courses capability and I'm gonna spend a very quick moment to explain what the uh, courses capability is. And I think the best way to do so is by going into the capability itself and clicking on add object. So basically the courses capability allows you to create any type of onboarding or training, or if you wanna upload specific resources for your employees, it's an extremely flexible tool. So just to play with our imagination, let's say we're creating a cooking class here for my employees. We might start off with a text object which describes and welcomes our employees to the cooking class. We might have a link where they can read about uh, the hamburger science uh, within a specific website. We might upload a PDF with the 25 most delicious burger recipes. And we can also quiz them about everything that they learned. So this is how you can basically, you know, mix and match from these different objects and create a training or onboarding for your employees. Uh, what's also cool is that for every single object, you can see what user has completed or not completed the different objects. You can also see it for the whole course itself. And one of our latest releases is that if I switch to my user view, now your employees can actually complete the course on the uh, computer. So I can go here to my uh, course and I can see here, welcome to my cooking class. And I can read uh, about the course that I'm gonna be doing. I can go to the burger science website and I can start studying about burger science. I can look at the 25 most delicious uh, burger recipes, and I can look through those. And I can, of course, complete the quiz. What pan should you use to fry a burger, etc. So that's in terms of the courses. We highly encourage you to explore that capability. There is quite a lot that you can do. I'm going to jump back to being an administrator, and I'm going to head into our time clock. So for our time clock, we've released uh, a few capabilities as well. I'm going to start off uh, within the Today tab. So within the Today tab, we've now made the map much, much larger. The reason is that we are very, very soon releasing the breadcrumbs capability, which will basically allow you to track your employees' movement uh, when they move across the city, doing their different jobs. So the map will now look a lot larger, which we think makes a lot of sense, especially um, if you're gonna be activating that capability. Another thing that we think is really, really useful is if you click on filter, you will now see that you have a few more filters to uh, utilize. One that is especially useful is that you can look for users that are scheduled for a shift now. And I can basically see that uh, I have clocked in, which is all good and fine, but Lara, who is scheduled for a shift, hasn't. So I can basically select her, go to actions, and I, I can now send her a chat message reminding her to clock in. I didn't mean to do caps. Um, and yes, so another thing that we added is if I go to the settings, employees can now, or administrators, sorry, can now lock days. And I'll explain what that means, but keep in mind that you can decide who can lock and who can unlock days. So if I go to my timesheets here, basically the locking capability allows you to lock a timesheet, meaning that employees can no longer go in and request to edit a shift. Administrators can no longer go in and change anything. And the reason that we've done this is to really make sure that when you go over your employees' timesheets, probably at the end of it, you wanna make sure that you lock so that no administrators make any changes, so that users don't make any changes by mistake. 
And that way, when you export it for payroll, you can always ensure that the hours that are in Connect Team and that the hours that you pay your employees for are always coherent and always match. I should also mention that you can lock the whole timesheet for a specific employee, or you can lock specific days. If I go to the export and I go to the timesheets, we've also added for those that are using the layers within the schedule, the ability to export the layers within the timesheet. One important caveat is the fact that you need to make sure that your employees clock in from the schedule and that your time clock and schedule are synced. But this was really requested from larger companies uh, that, for instance, let's say I'm adding a specific manager to a specific job. Now they want to know who the manager was uh, when they export the timesheet. So that is one use case uh, that you might uh, think about. I'm going to jump over to our quick tasks capability, which is over here. And for those that don't know, the quick tasks feature allows you to basically create any type of task, one off task that you'd like your uh, employees to do. It could be, you know, you get to the office and you might see that the lamp is broken, or maybe an administrator needs to create a complex onboarding. So all of that can now be done in Connect Team. Um, but what I want to show you is that we've now added the ability to repeat uh, a specific task. So you can see here that I've created an inventory check, which is now repeated every Wednesday and every Friday. And the way that I've done that is that I can click here on add task. I can add a single task. I can write here, check inventory. I can describe what this task is about. I can decide who I should assign it to. And the great thing about this is it can actually be assigned to several users. And I can have the task recur weekly, every Monday and Friday, let's say. And then I can publish the task. And the end result will look something like this. So again, uh, a lot of people were asking for the ability to repeat tasks within this capability. And we've finally been able to deliver on that feature. I'm going to jump over to a, our users page. And one of the things that we added here is the ability to quickly update specific user fields. So if I select my users, I can go to Actions. I can select Update Custom Field Values. And I can choose, for instance, City. And I can now change it to Seattle and click on Confirm. And there we go. My employees have changed, and they're now in Seattle. I should also mention that you can easily remove fields uh, this way. So I can go to Update Custom Fields. I can choose uh, Location here. And I am not going to add any specific, oh, sorry, city. I'm going to go here, Update Custom Field. I'm going to choose city. I'm not going to add anything. And I'm going to clear. And there we go. Now you'll see that they no longer have a city uh, attached to them, my employees. So hopefully that will help you work uh, much quicker in regards to um, adding fields and managing you know, all the information associated with your employees. And that is it. Uh, hopefully you've found this uh, useful. We will continue to do these types of webinars and continue to send you information about them. There is a final poll as soon as this webinar ends. We'd love for you to take one moment to answer so that we can learn and make sure that we improve. But otherwise, we really, really appreciate everyone's time for coming on and you know, uh, caring about Connect Team and all of the capabilities that we release. And see you next time. Thank you so much.